Hey there, how are you doing? I'm Ed Rosenberger, Visual Art and Design, and uh, we're going to give you some tips today on presenting your artwork for our uh, Visual Art and Design Art Showcase. It's really important that you put all this work into your uh, projects and your art and design, web design, animation, painting, photography, any of those uh, great mediums that we're working in, you put all this time into it. So now it's, it's, it's important to give it that uh, final polish that uh, is needed to present on our uh, on our new art panels that we have this year. So a couple of things, you know, why matte, why frame, why do all these things? Well, one is to sort of trim them out so they're they're really uh, have a finishing touch. The other thing is um, that often we want to sort of separate our work on the wall from other pieces. So over matting photographs, for example, is a great way to create um, some isolation. So this is a good example right here. This particular photograph that uh, Whitney has made. Uh, has a nice white space around it. Now, typically a width that we want to use is two to three inches. This is a little bit bigger than a, a three inch wide mat on the sides, but it really isolates the work. So when it's hanging on the wall, um, the, the viewer is drawn right to the uh, photograph. Um, this is a great way to do a canvas. This is a, a, one of Rob's uh, paintings that he's done and he's trimmed it out himself and he uh, will demonstrate that through the video here. On this particular frame um, that Rob built, this is a great uh, image that Rob made. Also has the wire back here, and he used the little eyelets in here and then uh, put the wire in, but every painting that's uh, a canvas, any framed item, any photograph that's framed, any media that's framed must have this wire on the back for our new um, artwork displays. That's the way that they must hang. Now, it's not necessarily required, you can Submit something that's mounted onto a mat board. And if you over mat it, that's ideal. But graphic design, typically, um, your media mounts to a mat board. This is probably a good example of maybe what not to do. Sometimes if we frame with too much frame, too much mat, it overpowers the artwork. What we want to do is give, us, give the viewer a nice, clean, uh, surrounding area around your art piece so that they can just settle there and look at it, study it, enjoy it, and uh, move on from there. So ultimately this is probably a little too much. It becomes about the frame, not so much about the art piece. So as a tip, keep it simple. Another one, keep it simple. So we have this uh, photograph here that Jen Palmer, our, uh, our photo uh, lab coordinator, produced and I'm going to mount this and I'm actually going to trim this just a tiny bit smaller so there's a little more white border around. I'm going to use several tools. I'm going to use um, this simple uh, mounting T-square and I'm going to use a cold mount process. Those of you in the photo program have done dry mounting where we use the hot press and so forth. But this is a product made by 3M. It's called uh, 568 uh, Positionable mounting tissue. Usually comes with a burnisher uh, tool and it also comes with a cover sheet to help you um, not damage your photograph. So I've got an over mat here, or uh, not an over mat, excuse me, I have a mat that I'm going to mount this photograph to and the very first thing I need to do is put uh, this adhesive onto the photograph. And it comes, uh, one side is already tacky, and then there's a backing material on here that we're going to remove once we get the uh, initial image here mounted to the one side. So I'm going to do something along this line. I'm just going to quickly position that there, and I'm going to cut the excess off. We don't have to be real particular. Um, as long as you get the material out to the edges of your photograph, that's what's important. I'm now going to take the cover sheet and I'm going to start from the center of the photograph and work out. And I'm just pushing, working from the center and that helps alleviate air bubbles or any of those things that uh, occur. I'm not mounting it to the board at this point in time, I'm just at applying the adhesive to the photograph, like so. In this process, I'm going to use the rotor trimmer here move these out of the way briefly. I'm going to use the rotor trimmer so that we can 
trim our photograph. And at this point, this is where you want to be very, very careful about how you trim your photograph to start with. So I'm going to uh, make my first cut, which is probably the most critical. And I'm going to retrim that one more time. I kind of snagged snag here. So I'm going to work in the opposite direction. Our rotor trimmer works best from one direction. And then finally we make our final cut. Usually I work around in, a, uh, in one direction or the other. Move that out of the way and we're going to come back now with our mat board. Now what we need to do is position this on our mat board and we need to remove the backing so that we can then adhere that to the to the mat board. So again we're going to mount these things together. We just get a little workspace here. So we have this item that's a, uh, a mounting T-square and it has numbers on it. And I'll show you how that works. It's a pretty slick system. It's also not a bad idea to use cotton gloves whenever you're working with these things. I've washed my hands and made sure they're very dry. You don't want to add lotion or anything like that to your hands, but ultimately um, it's important to think about the cotton gloves. It helps your uh, photographs or your artwork from getting fingerprints on there. We're usually pretty good with one of these. So, so ideally we're going to mount this photograph in this type of manner. And what the square helps us do is position that. So typically what we do is we position it up in one corner and lay the square on here and then move the square till I get the same number on both sides of the square. So in this particular case it's one and three quarters, one and three quarters. And then as I move the uh, image over to that, it's going to give me the same space on either side of our photo photograph. The next step is to slide it down, look across the square to the larger number, and it's about four and a half. And if I move this up to the smaller number here at four and a half, it'll position the photograph pretty square like so. So the trick here is that before I do any of this, I need to remove the backing and what this is doing is allowing the adhesive to stay onto the photograph all perfectly trimmed and you can see I didn't rub it down um, nearly enough so it kind of bubbled back a little bit it'll still stay in place for our demo but ideally you want to do that so I'm going to hold this up real quick because this will stay in place traditionally we start with a photograph, I'm going to put it over here so we can have a version this way. I usually put the square in here and I line up the large numbers so I basically get one and three quarters. So I read this number over here, one and three quarters, and I read this number, one and three quarters on this side. Once I get that centered, so to speak, then I can position the image up against the square like so. Again, I'm going to move it down. Let me do this from above. I think it'll work better from uh, the visual above. So we get one and three quarters. Come down here. I look across to the large number. I get four and a half. And I move this up to four and a half. And now it should be nicely centered with just a little more space at the bottom. We typically want to have a quarter inch or so or a little bit more space because visually our brain actually feels like if it's perfectly centered this always looks optically to be too thin so we like to have just a little more space at the bottom for that reason. Finally we put the cover sheet over to protect our image and again we push out from the center and you really want to spend some time and, and burnish this onto the mat board so it really stays there. This is a great way to uh, work, you know, some of the designers, if uh, some of your uh, printouts and everything can use this uh, scotch mounting system, it's great. It's uh, much healthier for your lungs than uh, spray mount, some of those things. But that's also another way to get there, but typically with photographs and artwork that you want to have archival, meaning you want to have acid-free results. So there you have it, a quick uh, mounting demo with a photograph. Thank you.